once we understand the truth values of the individual operations, we can combine them to make more compound propositions. So here's a series of compound propositions, but notice how they all use the operations that we already understand. So there's the negation operator, or not, and here's the conjunction operator, or and, and the disjun disjunction operator, or or, in several places. So it's just a combination of putting ver different variables together using these operators. Now, if we're going to combine them together, uh, using more than one, we need to understand the order of operations. And this is a ba fundamental principle when we're talking about mathematics, is the idea of which operation happens in which order. And just like with basic math operations, whoops, And just like with other basic math operations, the parentheses come first. And parentheses are used to either change the order of operations or to clarify the order of operations. And whatever's done inside parentheses is computed first. The next order of operations is the negation or not operation, followed by conjunction and disjunction. And comes next, and then or. So this is the order of operations, and when we combine them together, then they create these compound propositions. Now, parentheses are required if you're changing order of operations, but they're also recommended for when you just want to add clarity. So it's very clear what operations happen in what orders. So let's use this information to work with a compound proposition. Well, first we need to identify how many variables are in the proposition because that tells us how big our truth table needs to be. So uh, there's a formula that you can use to identify how many um, rows you need in a, ver in a truth table, and it's based on the number of variables. So it is 2 raised to the power of the number of variables. So if you have one variable, and let me just superscript this, Okay, so if we have one variable, then we take two, raise it to one, and that provides us, tells us how many rows we need. So we need two rows. Now we can use the same process with multi different variables, right? So if we have two variables, then we take two and raise it to the power of two, and that means we need four rows. If we have three variables, then we take two raised to the power of three, the number of variables, and identifies that we need eight rows. And this identifies how many rows you need for all the combinations of true and false. And you can just keep going and use the same formula over and over again to figure out how many you need. If you have four variables, you need 16 rows. And it continues like that. Now you need one additional row, and that's for the labels. Um, this tells us how many we need for all of the combinations. So if in our case, we have three variables, so we're going to need eight rows for the different combinations. So I'm going to insert a table here, and it needs. I'm going to put one for a column for each variable, and then a row. Oops. I'll try it again. Insert a table three columns, and then we need eight rows for the different combinations and one for the labels by nine. So now I don't need these quite this big, so I'm going to just slide it over and say, okay, I need one for the variable RP, one for Q, and one for R, like that. And I can just type these in here directly, P, Q, and R. Now I want to center these, so I'm just going to take that table and center it. And now we can put in all the different combinations for these truth values. So we know we start with the rightmost column, and we just alternate true and false. And we just do it over and over again, true then false, and I can just copy that and paste it, and now I've just got true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. In the next column from the right, we do two trues, and then two falses, and then we repeat that. And in the next column, we do four trues in a row, oops, each in their own row, and then four falses. 
And there we have every combination of true and false for three variables. And so that gets us started. Next, we're going to work through this um, compound proposition, and we're going to do pieces of it at a time. So here I'm going to create, a, I'm going to insert a column to the right, and I'm going to say, let's start with here what's in parentheses, which is the P and Q. So I'm going to paste it here, and notice this column that I added isn't wide enough, so I'm just going to slide it over and make it wider until it's big enough to hold that. All of the, the columns are big enough for the true false, but I want the label to work too. So now we just do P and Q, and we know how to do this, right? We just take P and Q, and we know that operation. So we know true and true is true, and we have true and true again, which is true, true and false, and we have that twice, so that's false and false. And then we have false and true a couple times, that's false and false, and then we have false and false. So now we have the truth value just based on the AND. Next, we can do the NOT R. So again, I insert a column to the right. And now I'm just going to copy down and paste the NOT R. And again, I want this centered. In fact, it looks like both of these are NOT. OK, now I'm going to take the R column right? And I'm going to put what is the not value of that. So if I take true, the not is false. If I take false, the not is true. True, not is false, and then true. And this just follows the same pattern down here all the way. False, true, false, and true. And there I've got the not operator. So the next one then is since I've got the truth values of this, and I've got the truth values of this, all I need is to OR those two columns together. So to do that, I'm going to insert a column to the right, and I'm going to put the whole thing, because this is our last operation to make this complete. I'm going to paste it there, and again, make it wide enough that the label stays in place. And now, notice that I have this part in this column, and I have the NOT R in this column, and all I have to do is combine those two columns with disjunction or with the OR. So I just do true or false, and I know that's true. True or true is true. Now I have false or false, and that is false. Here false or true is true. False or false is false. False or true is true. False or false is false. And false or true is true. And there, I have used a truth table to identify the truth values for every combination of the variables for this complex, compound proposition.